Hello students, let's go over the major muscles that you need to know. If you'll follow along with your lab manual, let's look at the muscles of the head. Now remember when you were studying the skull that the around the ear was the temporal bone? Well this muscle here is named because it over has attachment to the temporal bone and so it's called the temporalis. Okay, the temporalis. Under this is a saliva gland, and under or it's also called a parotid gland. Under this parotid gland or saliva gland is the masseter. Right here, uh, allowing for the drawing up of the corners of the lip would be the zygomaticus major. It is marked with the number 8 on this particular torso, but is called zygomaticus major to raise the lips in like a smile, the corners of the lips. Now, there are two sphincter muscles on this, on the head, and sphincter muscles are orbicularis muscles, orbicularis oculi around the eye and the orbicularis oris around the mouth. You can pucker up in a kiss with the orbicularis orbicularis oris. And this helps you to close the eyelid and with another muscle, along with this and another muscle, the eyelid is raised. Okay, so the orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, the temporalis, and the zygomaticus, oh, excuse me, zygomaticus major, right here, under the saliva gland is the masseter. Now let's go over those muscles again of the head that you need to know. Here is the temporalis on this this is a, we call this the little man torso, or the little torso, the temporalis, the orbicularis oculi, the orbicularis oris, and you have to look a little closer right here for the zygomaticus major, and there's the masseter. The masseter is responsible for mastication. Mastication is the process of chewing that allows to pull that jaw up or the mandible up in chewing. Now as we look at this posterior torso in this area forming sort of a triangular muscle would be the trapezius. Now it's cut away here so you can see the vertebrae. As we go lower, this it's also sort of a, a triangular shaped muscle. It is the latissimus dorsi, covers most of the inferior torso. So the trapezius, latissimus dorsi, the deltoid. from the anterior view or the frontal region of this torso. Here's the deltoid again and here is the pectoralis major and under that you're going to find the pectoralis minor. Okay, pectoralis minor and the large muscle that I just removed pectoralis major. The arm muscles, here's our arm model. The arm, arm muscles that you are responsible for, the deltoid, This is more posterior arm. That would be the 
triceps brachii, the triceps brachii, we turn the arm over, and there, about to, trying to fall off on me, is the biceps brachii. So the inside of the arm here, biceps, the action of the biceps is to flex at the elbow. The triceps is an antagonist to the prime mover for flexion of the elbow and the main function of the triceps is extension of the arm at the elbow. And again, this is the deltoid muscle. The triceps more posterior on the arm anteriorly found on the arm would be the biceps. Biceps brachii and triceps brachii posterior. Action of the biceps to flex the arm at the elbow and the triceps help, help to control that movement by extending as the a controlled extension as the biceps contract and shorten. For extending the arm, that's the prime movement of the triceps, so the triceps are called the prime mover, triceps brachii, and then the biceps brachii works against it, so you have controlled movement. The the triceps brachii, prime mover for extending the arm at the elbow. As it is shortening to extend the arm at the elbow, the biceps are lengthening, so they act against each other. So muscles will usually work, their main action is only, only in one direction, though they can contract to shorten and then lengthening for controlled movement to work against another muscle for controlled movement.